Um, yes, so my name is Tobian Holm. I'm a technical fellow of Eurostep. Eurostep has been around since 1994, and I was one of the founders. We've been uh, active in information integration since day one, mainly based on uh, product data standards. We've been very active in ISO uh, on um, step standards. Uh, ISO 15926 and other standards that has to do with um, representation of product data. We were planning to present what another presentation that Nigel Show has presented in several times in different places. But you know, life is strange and um, hard to predict. So Nigel passed away one and a half week ago. So here I am trying to pre present his slides and uh, listening to you for a couple of hours. I understand that you are real OSLC experts, all of you, and uh, I'm not. I'm a newcomer, but I have a lot of experience about information integration and the business processes and the product life cycle and so on. So what I will do is talk about what we have learned during the years about OSC and our view of it uh, from an um, information integration point of view. Not so much about how to integrate systems more how to integrate and keep the data integrated uh, over 40, 50, uh, 40, 50 years or the predicted life cycle of, of a product system. This is something that has changed our lives. We know that. And it's all about links. And um, there's a lot of links around. And, uh, but it's just growing all the time. And, uh, but also this technology is evolving. We got security and so on included in this. And this is things that we need to deal with when we deal with product data, we deal with, uh, uh, export control, we de 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 deal with uh, ITAR, we deal with um, IPR protection and these things. And that things that we need to uh, support in the kind of environments that we talk about when we talk about collaborative product data sharing through the life cycle of complex systems. This is a little bit of what we think about things. What is a link, an identifier, or an address, or a relationship, or a service? The link serves to identify something. An address where I'll find more data about something and more links. A relationship, a link establishes a relationship between things. And that's usually one way. A service, the link can be used to trigger behavior and return a response as we have heard a lot about. And uh, some comments on the identifier. It doesn't really make clear what, what is the something. And uh, the address doesn't say what it addresses. A relationship doesn't really say what the relationship means. And uh, a service it doesn't really say what the service does. And these kind of things, I understand that we'll see is trying to address. These are technologies that we, we see are, are related to OSLC, and I think you know much, much more about this than I do. 
Uh, we have been doing IoT for a long time. Uh, and uh, we have also been touching on OSSC in uh, European research projects and so on, but we are not expert on this. But we see that we need to get into it. And uh, that's why we are now joining this side of the technology. So what does links do in engineering data? You know, there are a lot of tools that are depending on links, of course. If you have a um, system based on the REST API, and you, you, you use the REST API to uh, communicate from, uh, from the web, uh, web browser, then you use links. But what we are really eager to understand is how to uh, make the links in the resulting data persistent so we can uh, support them over a long time, a long, much longer than the, the, the dif different product suites are maintained and so on. And, uh, that's why we, we think we have something to contribute with in this uh, community. In the perfect world, we could use linking to maintain traceability across tools and disciplines. I think that's what OLC, OLC is doing. Link values to sources, link requirements to design artifacts, things you, that's already done. Maintain configurations by linking into baselines that cross multiple repositories, yes. Link to product designs and individuals from social media. Very, very interesting when you are following the performance of a product in, in a consumer area. What do a uh, um, uh, person flying with a um, Boeing 737 think about it? And both as a type and both uh, as an individual uh, product and reduce the paper load delivered with products and so on, much more. And that, that means that we will support business use cases, like we already heard about requir requirement tracing, crossing boundaries and stop pipes, change impact assessment, digital thread and cooperating digital twins, where the law thing is very important, Tying the traditional internet and social media to product data, IoT data integration and AI and machine learning and stream analytics and everything. So why are not everyone jumping on the train? And why do some people hesitate? One challenge is that legacy systems and proprietary databases not set up to act as servers and they lack fine-grained access. Cybersecurity, firewalls and hackers. And one big thing that we see in, uh, in um, industry is cyber threats. And the reaction from the CIOs on that, they don't want to have uh, links into through the firewall to their product data. Intellectual property rights. I can see a link to it, but can I use it? How do I get paid for use of my design and so on? This is. I mean, some people um, try to solve this, uh, and there are many research projects going on on this and uh, so on. But uh, in uh, in a world that uh, consists of engineering uh, ecosystems, this needs to be addressed. 
I heard some questions about authorities and things like that with, with uh, not really any answer on that, but that needs to be addressed, especially now with, uh, I mean, there are forces pushing us to go with the technology that we don't, we don't rely on trust. So we, we need to have architecture based on no trust. And then this is very, very important. Another thing is that uh, engineers like closed world views. They don't want to have an answer saying that uh, we have at least so many of this kind of product. They know, would like to have exactly how many there are out there. And um, I don't know how you view that the open world versus the closed world, perhaps that's solved already, but th these are things that I heard at custom sites. Uh, IT systems die, will cost uh, many, many, a lot of money to maintain. And uh, over time, data gets changed, deleted, archived, and so on. And how do we deal with that in an environment where we point to things? And uh, it, in reality, we need to have some uh, ways to uh, know that how many, how many are, uh, artifacts are pointing at me. I don't know how that's, uh, perhaps that's also, so addressed or at least uh, start to be addressed or perhaps it's solved, I don't know. But this, uh, that's the challenge that we have met at um, the customers. This was a follow-up, some uh, statements from different uh, famous people. And the last one in the bottom, engineering data includes many relationships between things that we should do more to capture, manage and preserve, especially as we shift away from document-based processes. And that's what, where many of our customers are. They, they are coming from a document world, they are moving into a more explicit, explicit world, but they like to go to supporting links and so on. And that's why we are very interested in the OSLC technology. Thanks, I, th I think I made it in time at least. <laughs>